Spin counter. This is for pass protection and picking up bloggers, okay? So with spin counter, right, with a uh, running back, you're sometimes at a disadvantage, in my opinion, with picking up blessing linebackers, say these corners, whatever the case is, because you're in a standstill position. For the most part, you got guys coming at you for speed, okay? So sometimes you might get a defender trying to pick a shoulder, set you up for the spin move. That's why I call it spin counter. If you feel like a guy's going to spin you around, right, or spin off you, they're going to pick a shoulder, they're going to try to set it up. At the last part of the second, to help counter that, spin him around, stay square, and stay in front. So you'll see here, he picks his shoulder, spins around, panic eight, stays in front, shuffles his feet. Okay, I play it for a speed now. Picks his shoulder, sets it up, spin, stay in front, panic eight, pass him around. I, I played tight end in high school and in college. I learned this in high school, and it never did me wrong. Okay, so I stuck with this when I coached receivers for a couple of years. Same thing here. Picks a shoulder, spins around, stays in front. Good pass potential, to, especially if you get a lot of guys trying to spin you off. The reason I got two linebackers, I'm forcing the running back to make reads. That's why. Patty K stays in front. Good job by the running back here. Stays in front. Fit and drive, okay? So I'm just working the last part of an engaged block. So I'm going to already going to have the running back fit in a good position. Here, fit and then drive, keeping a good base and driving up the block. So one of the culture points I have, I tell you with my running backs, you want to really want to drive a guy back, bench press. That makes sense? Two dumbbell bench press be exact because in your traditional bench press, your shoulder's going to be a little bit more out vertically down, going down to the sides. If you say close grip or two dumbbell bench press, your elbows are naturally going to go in. You're in a good football position. Drive. Fit, drive. Fit and drive. Already fitted. Drive, bench press. Good job by him right here. Fitting and dry. He has a good base. He's athletic. He's strong. The biggest coaching point I would give my running backs or even receivers, guys who engage your blocks, especially with second, third level defenders, always keep your stomach tight, engage your core, and never look them in the eye because they'll fool you with their eyes. Look at most of their chin and also they the V of their neck because they're going to have to go one way or the other. If that makes sense. If you're already engaged, look at the V of their neck. That would tell you which way they're trying to go. Now we look at my eye. Now we look at my eye. Strike and drive. So now we're going to simulate guy picking somebody up in the last possible second. Driving, fitting and driving. Okay, same thing. Now this is a good clip right here. I want to show. This is a bad position for a running back. So this is what it looks like for a running back to catch a block. If he catches a block, you see how his spine is more so vertical. He's absorbing contact. Right. That is when you're going to get pancake. If that makes sense. I would rather for him to try to engage me and be aggressive. He's coming to balance, but now you see where his hips are? They're coming back. He's not a good at that position. Shoulders are behind the knees, okay? So a good a good emphasis of, of a good uh, blocking position for any type of guy, especially uh, running back and receivers. If you say stomach to thighs, your shoulders are going to be all on the mat, they'll be knees and toes. It's just like a hand clean position or a power clean position. That makes sense. That true football is position, but you're picking up a hex bar deadlift. Same same thing. If you're in that good power position, you'll be in a good position to make a block. Same thing here. I make no force to make reads so they can pick up their guys, okay? I make guys drop. They got to pick up the right guy, okay? So when I do my drills like this, I simulate like it's one of our protections. I will have three linebacks or two linebacks, okay, because it's forcing the seat. They know the old line will be accountable for one. They might got somebody who is from the field that may be careful for somebody else that's not theirs. So it forces them to make a read. So this drill right here, I like a lot because sometimes with running backs, you might get that little, uh, initial collision and you got to really absorb contact and get your feet back underneath you and drive. Okay, so what he's going to do is going to bitch press me right here and he's going to work up to another defender just like you simulated that ricochet. So ideally it's going to have to be one guy, but I'm making them to make a decision. I'm making them be good and strong and being driving with that good bench press and working up to another defender and getting good position. Here we go. Bench press, push off, and then drive. Bench press and drive. We good, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So this is a good example right here of a running back picking up his key. So, when well, sometimes a running back, especially at our level, sometimes we may be a disadvantage size wise, but we have good position, we'll be fine. So, the running back does a good job here picking up his key because this guy's probably got about 20 pounds, right? He does a good job. He's a good position. 
He gives the quarterback enough time to feel comfortable and to make a play. I know we missed a throw, but I tell the running back this. Create the pocket for the quarterback when you're in pass protection. Okay, create the pocket. Because if you get collided to the quarterback's lap, he's not comfortable. You're going to second guess his thought process and making the throw. You're going to mess up his clock. If that makes sense. Because the quarterback has a quarterback has a, like an eternal clock of where the drop is, to where the rush is, and when to get the ball out. So we want that clock to be consistent. We want the quarterback to feel comfortable. Create the pocket for the quarterback. The running back does a really good job here getting the position, being strong with his feet, and giving him enough time to make a play. You'll see it good from the tight here in a second. Slow motion it. He sees it, gets a good position, engages. Well, I keep his head up, but it's a good job. He, so like we talked about the ricochet, right? He gets a little bit of a knock back, but he resets his hips and he sits down. That's a good job by this kid right here. Really good job. Yeah, now, that hit, reset is so important. Like so many guys, especially early in their career, they put everything into that initial shot, and then they're they're not even really thinking about the reset. Exactly. Right? Like usually, you play anybody who's worth it, right? They're gonna make you reset. Like even if you're killing it, like if you're if you're in great buy position, eventually you're gonna have to reset. Mm -hmm. So I always I always tell guys like, don't you know, don't give yourself one bullet. Like don't don't leave don't leave your feet, don't leave your hips. Like you want to be physical, but don't give yourself one shot to get this guy. Make sure, like you said, with the tight elbows, mm -hmm. that's so key too. I remember because I played offensive line and I always heard when I was younger, like you got to have tight hands. And I'd be like, okay, tight hands. And then the first thing that happens when you put your hands together is your elbows come out. Right. right? And then somebody told me, you know, you really want tight elbows. And I was like, you can't, you can't not have tight elbows. You can't have tight elbows and wide hands. You'd never naturally do that. Right. And it's a such, such a good point. So many guys, they don't want to miss. So they get big, but then they, they lose all their power, that ability to translate that bench press from the, from the pec through the arm. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, that's great stuff. Yeah, man. So, and then with my running backs, right? I like I have they do a good job. Like they like to protect. protect. I don't have issues where they're like, oh, I don't want to protect. Now they, they do a really good job. I'm very blessed to have these guys in my room. Yeah, that's awesome. So, here we're making a read. Here they're looking at the linebacker. The linebacker doesn't come. They respond for the corner safety. So the running back does a good job here. He sees it, gets the guy down, and give him enough time, and we get a big completion. Yeah, I think it's a huge thing, even, like, emotionally. Like, if you can pass block as a running back, like, that's mm -hmm. huge for your confidence, right? Because right. that, that's where the linebacker should win. So, like, if you're shutting them down, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that situation, you know, like, that's that's really how you show, hey, like, I'm I'm more than just a piece of this. Like, I, I, can, I can take the whole game over, right? Mm -hmm. However we got to win, I can be a part of it. That's always I find when guys are really competitive. You know, it's kind of like playing defensive basketball. It might not be why you play basketball, but – you know, you got to, you know, you got to take pride in it. And and it's a chance for you to really assert your dominance. You know, yes, as a guy, yes. running backs, almost always one of the best athletes on the team, one of the key pieces in any really good team. You want, like, that's a chance for you to show the rest of the team, like, hey, I can put us on my back. Like, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about catching it if I got to catch it. I'm not worried about blocking if I got to block. Um, that That's a, it's great, like you said, when you have guys in your room that are willing to do that, because I think it's a game changer, um, not emotionally, but, but in terms of momentum for your team, like if 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 that's a trusted position for you, that's huge. Right. And then, you know, when it comes to like blitz pickup, I teach my running backs a lot of clues, okay? So they may not always look at the safety, but I tell them, especially into the boundary, that's when you're going to get most of your corner pressure anyway. We, I've seen corner pressure from the field one time in all my years coach, and I've been coaching for almost 10 years, okay? So a lot of times with the corner is going to like blitz, Sadie's going to be offset off the hash. So this guy's pretty much offset, especially when on the other side tight end, if that makes sense. And it's kind of like the telltale for a corner of the blitz. If you see the guy off the hash and this is your side that you read it, they know they expect corner blitz, which you see right here. Because the if they get a corner blitz, unless your Sadie is like really, really flash, fast or he can disguise it, he has to get off the hash, get off the top quick. And then we're able to take advantage of it. So I would run back to my room know that. So here, there's a textbook right here. The running back scans his protection. Linebacker comes. He fits right inside out. Perfect technique. Picks him up, sticks his foot in the ground, and goes the vertical, okay? This linebacker right here has us by like 30 pounds, okay? My running back, he's a little bit smaller, but he's a tough kid. He picks him up. Good hand placement, good shock, and good drive. And we're able to get a good completion for a first down. 
fit inside out, had a cross, strike it, drive. Good job by this kid right here. So this is a good cut block here. One of my key culture points for cut key culture points for a cut block. Once you decide to cut, crawl. Once you crawl on the ground, you're forcing the defender to cut in to keep their hands on you and they fight over you. Okay, you'll see it here in a second. Go for the cut. Oh, let me go back real quick. I think I'm sure you guys saw it. Coach, you good? 